OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So, um, the, how did we end up starting with the Triple E framework? You know, as an International Society of Technology for Educators called ISTE member, I was always looking out for content that I could adapt to adult learner. As you know, most of ISTE is K-12, but we're, we're finessing it now to become more adult level. And I found this book called Learning First, Technology Second, and um, it was by Liz Kolb. And I was immediately intrigued as when I read the book, I felt so many things similar to how she was thinking about technology and integration. So I bought the book and found the Triple E framework. I also turned Christy Reyes onto this framework and um, she's helped us a lot with developing our ideas about this for adult ed. So we're gonna use the words framework and model interchangeably here, just in case, because sometimes I use framework and sometimes I use the word model. Okay, next Debbie. So, the book was really focused on K-12 and it was very hard for me to use it in adult ed. However, her research and her focus was just what adult educators needed. So Christy and I convinced OTAN and this wonderful team of teachers to help convert it into a framework that adult educators can use. Now, let me tell you just a little bit about Liz Kolb. She's a clinical psychologist with the University of Michigan and she used this research for her PhD. Um, she did a lot of classroom observations in K-12, and she found that teachers were using technology, but mostly for fun gaming behavioral purposes yeah. instead of for cognitive purposes. Her framework is easy to use so that teachers can easily see what the student is learning and how technology engages with, enhances, and or extends learning outside the classroom. Next slide. So today's objective is to review the Triple E framework of engagement, enhancement, and extension, and to take a look at the OTAN's Triple E framework for adult education Moodle course. Next, please. So how does this framework differ from other frameworks? You might be familiar with SAMR and or TPAC. Um, SAMR, as you can see here, is very linear and it focuses on the technology and on the teacher. It assumes that teachers want students to move up the SAMR ladder. The, this framework is so lines, is, is so straight up and down, and we all know that learning is messy, so it's overly simplified. The other framework over here is called TPAC, and it's a framework which looks like a Venn diagram. While the framework is useful and valid, it is extremely complicated for a classroom teacher to use. The Triple E framework uses this type of Venn diagram, but is much, much more focused on student learning and not overly nonlinear. So Jennifer will describe this framework in the next slide. So here we have the Triple E framework of Venn diagram. We're focusing on three big areas, engagement, enhancement and extension. Let's get to, we're taking all these into account and we're trying to get to the sweet spot, the integration of technology in our classrooms and our activities. Let's talk about engagement first. We're focusing on time on task. Is the technology helping us to focus on that task? We're talking about co-use. Are students using the technology together? And is technology helping them achieve their learning goals? Next, I would like to talk about enhancement. Does the use of technology add value to the lessons that are being learned? It also, technology is used to scaffold the material that the students are learning and they're trying to differentiate or personalize the lesson plans so people can use the technology, the technology to personalize these lesson plans. And finally, we move to extension. We're trying to tap into students' authentic experiences. We're trying to connect learning 24 seven so people are learning 
outside the classroom. What they learn in, inside the classroom is applied outside of the classroom. And also we're trying to develop their soft skills. Next, please. First, we want to look at engagement. I love technology and I'm always excited to try uh, a new technology tool. But as Susan mentioned and Liz Kolb stresses, learning goals need to come first and technology second. As we're preparing our lessons, we need to ask ourselves a few questions. Next. Number one. Does the technology allow students to focus on the task of the assignment or activity with less distraction? One of the key elements about engagement is the fact that students are active in the learning process. The technology allows them to focus on the task. Next. Number two, does the technology motivate students to start the learning process? Does it get them up and get them going? Does it motivate students to immerse themselves in the learning? I've heard engagement described as the hook that grabs the student and pulls them into the lesson. Next. Does, tech, does the technology cause shift in the behavior of students where they move from passive to active social learners? Years ago, I was teaching ABE and I wanted my students to learn the steps on how to write a research paper. And I could have gone through the um, steps, created a handout and given them a lesson on, re on the research paper, but I tried a different reproach. Um, I, um, as I, as a class, um, we decided on a topic, Elvis Presley. Students worked in groups on the computers to research Elvis's life. We printed different articles, made copies of them in our reading group. Um, I gave students highlighters to mark what was important. We created an outline and then wrote our paper, but we didn't stop there. We again divided into groups. Each group was responsible to create a video clip of a different part of his life, childhood, education, military, etc. Each group had to insert images and every person in their group had to narrate at least one sentence. Uh, students didn't miss class. They were definitely engaged. We put all the clips together. Um, they showed their work to an ESL class and many of my students requested their own copies. They were so proud. That was one of my best lessons ever. I now know why. It had many of the elements of the Triple E framework, especially engagement. Uh, next. Very important to Triple E is co-use. Liz Cope defines it as the person-to-person -person social use of a digital tool. Think about pairing students to work together on a learning activity by using a technology tool. Your lesson doesn't have to be as involved as mine, but just adding turn and talk can make a difference. This is where students turn to a partner and discuss the subject before sharing with the whole group. You can ask students to turn and talk about what they are learning using the technology tool. It gives students a sounding board and more confidence to express themselves in the group or think aloud. This is where the teacher verbalizes what he or she is thinking while reading or working out loud. You can use model and then have students do the same in small groups. You could also use paraphrasing and that's having the students put what the author is saying in their own words. Um, you could use a tablet. You can also use graphic organizers to improve their comprehension. Hem, comprehension? <laughs> Sorry. Um, you can also read the first part of a story and then have your students predict what will happen next, or maybe have them um, create a Google slide with their story idea. These are just a few ideas to make your lessons more engaging. Think about how you can make your lessons more engaging. 
uh, don't worry, we have a cheat sheet with numerous examples on how you can make your lessons more engaging. Next, let's look at enhancing our lessons. And I'm going to turn that over to Elisa. Thank you so much, Susan. So now that you have an idea of how to engage your students, let's talk about enhancing your lesson plans. We saw in one of the beginning slides, incorporating activities that enhance your lesson adds value to them, scaffolds and supports them, and differentiates and personalizes them. Let's take a look at three questions that you want to ask yourself regarding enhancement. Question number one, does the technology tool aid students in developing or demonstrating a more sophisticated understanding of the content? To enhance a lesson, teachers want to create opportunities for creation and or production over consu consumption, meaning that after content is introduced, scaffolded activities are developed and used for students to gain a broader understanding of the content. The tool should be meaningful and impactful, not just a time filler. For example, if students are being introduced to new grammar, just adding YouTube videos on or online worksheets aren't enough. Being passive with materials only adds quantity to the content. When students share how the video relates to the textbook or worksheet amongst each other, they then demonstrate understanding with critical thinking skills. This is an indicator to the instructor that the enhancement activities allowed students to demonstrate their understanding. If this cannot be demonstrated yet, more enhancement activities are added. Question two. Does the technology create scaffolds to make it easier to understand concepts or ideas? As it was stated in the previous slide, scaffolds are meant as stepping stones for students to gradually master a concept, not add more complexity to an already unknown topic. If the specific content is not mastered by the students with deeper understanding, more scaffolding is needed. But again, not just for the sake of doing more, it's to give students different opportunities to practice before moving on. Question three, does the technology create paths for students to demonstrate their understanding of the learning goals in a way that they could not do with traditional tools? By giving students a choice in how they demonstrate their learning, instructors are empowering students to be self-confident. This in turn ensures students will learn more at an accelerated rate. The cookie cut cutter method of instruction does not always work for all students. Like you, your students gain knowledge in different ways. Some actually learn better by studying for an exam. Some would prefer to create a presentation. Others may enjoy leading a group project. By introducing several different ways to express knowledge, students can break their own barriers to learning by selecting which fits best for them. Here are some of the examples from the cheat sheet. As Susan talked about, turn and talk or turn and teach is an excellent way for students to demonstrate their knowledge to another. For example, students can share new vocabulary words they learned after doing a Burlington English unit and help identify the meanings with each other. Graphic organizers allow students to categorize and mentally prepare them for to take the knowledge they gained to the next level. After watching a video, students can work in groups to organize what they saw, perhaps make a word map with verb tenses. Exit tickets are a quick and easy way for students to demonstrate knowledge at the end of the day. When given a prompt, students can write a quick note or draw a picture to show if they understood or if they liked the way it was presented. If students can organize main ideas into subcategories, sequencing, timelines, and family trees, these are all ways to show understanding. Differentiated instruction allows all students to learn in different ways. The instructor provides multiple ways to learn, and in turn, the students learn multiple ways to demonstrate learning. Metacognitive strategies, the most empowering gift you can provide students is the ability for them to understand how best they learn. Do they learn best by listening, reading, taking notes, or watching a video? 
When instructors provide multiple means of learning, students gauge what works best for them and can adapt on their own. On their own. Now that you have a better understanding of how to enhance your lessons, Debbie will introduce extension to you. Thank you, Elisa. Extension is the third and last component of the Triple E framework. In some ways, it's what we're aiming at with all the others. We want to bring the school experience into our learners' homes and into their work. Next, the questions. Next, yeah, thank you. <laughs> the questions that we want to ask and that are part of the rubric. So that's where these questions came from. There's a rubric that you can use to evaluate your lessons. And these are some of those questions. So the, rubric, the questions are these. Does the technology create opportunities for students to learn outside of their typical school day? Next. Does the technology create a bridge between school learning and everyday life experience? Next. Does the technology allow students to build skills that they can use in their everyday lives? Next. Extension is accomplished by using real world connections in our classes. This can be accomplished with problems reflecting situations in their jobs or lives or lives. Capture daily experiences in your lessons. Simply done fraction or percentage problems bring in shopping or cooking where students use their phones to share what they find. You keep students learning anywhere, anytime. Extension allows students to take what they're learning in class into their lives. They can practice critical thinking, decision making, and problem solving. They acquire a big picture perspective. For me, this is the proof of the learning. Students are empowered to integrate their knowledge, make their own observations, and bring in other contexts. So your choice of text tools can facilitate skills they take away from your class. Tech not just to be used in class, but tech that can be used in their lives now and in the future. Consider what skills they might need. Collaboration. This applies every day when they might be doing things like Facebook or um, groups or using Zoom. Um, curation. This requires critical thinking for them to gather knowledge and then evaluate whether the knowledge has bearing on the truth. Um, organizational skills, applying Evernote or Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive, using it here in the classroom can extend to them using it in their lives. There's virtual tools that help students design, deliver, and support what they learn, um, such as creating a YouTube. Um, another area that is important that was brought to my attention by my boss, John Kerr, when he came to me and said that our CTE students are prepared and yet they go out and sometimes they don't keep the job because they don't have soft skills. Our classrooms are a great opportunities to prepare our students with those soft skills that they're going to need on their job. Things like time management, professionalism, working in a group. Next. You can focus in classroom activities to prepare your students with the tools that they're going to need to extend their learning into their everyday lives. Here are a few. You can use distributed spaced practice. So whatever they learn today, they're gonna to revisit it next week and the week after that and the week after that, which reflects the real world when problems crop up all over the time, place and at any time. They can expand online writing. Most of our students text each other. They use Facebook and Instagram already. We can help improve their writing and expose them to other avenues of writing. I had a student who through our classrooms writing was able to make himself less likely to be laid off because his supervisor depended on him to write the weekly reports. We can introduce inquiry-based instruction where students create questions about what they want to learn. In reciprocal questioning, also known as request, the role of teacher and student is reversed, and the students create their own questions about a topic or lesson. Think of what they'll learn when they have to try and teach the topic. Finally, include ways to connect with the real world in your classroom. Use real world issues. Partner with real world organizations. Connect with authentic experts. 
offer opportunities for students to connect with community partners. The success of any teacher is in knowing you have prepared your students for their lives. They don't live very long in our classrooms. They move on. Our job is to ensure that they have the tools to grow, thrive, and succeed outside our doors. Now, we want to show you the course is created. Blair, next. All righty. Um, well, I have the great pleasure of showing you the course that we developed. It's currently um, in Moodle. Um, it will eventually be moving over to Canvas, but I'm going to take you live, which means I need to share. And I apologize that I'm looking in odd places, but um, that happens to be the function of the, my system. So I apologize. I'm not looking directly at you. I will in a minute. Okay, let's see if I can get this right. Okay, um, can somebody give me a confirmation that you're looking at the Moodle course, please? Yes, we are. Yay, okay. So here is the Triple E framework course developed over the course of a year. And we'll get started. So what we wanted to do was to provide a way for um, us to help teachers learn how to incorporate the Triple E framework into their lessons effectively. So we've developed this course that um, hopefully provides that. We've had one pilot go through and you'll be hearing from some of them today. <clears throat> um, the course starts off with a, we have some basic accessibility statement, course acknowledgement, resource links, and then uh, how to navigate the course. Then we go into the, the meat of the course with week one and week two. In the week one, we have introduction. And um, as you see, we have a lot of forums in week one. We used forums in the, the course to build community and to get um, active discussion going with uh, the participants. And I'd just like to show you what we did with the first forum. We gave the participants of the course an option to either write their response or to record their response, to uh, introduce themselves to the rest of the participants and to um, maybe share some a unique fact that no one else might know about or none of the other participants in the course would know about them. So I just got permission to show you, I'm gonna show you a little clip that I thought was just wonderful. Oh, except that when I shared, let me, let me get the sound going. Um, okay, uh, let's hopefully this is going to work. And this is, and I'm hoping I'm pronounced, I'm not gonna say anything, I'll, I'll do it afterwards. Um, she is in the room, Bill Quis, and I could be wrong on that, but you're gonna find out in just a second. Do you know what the name, the Arabic name of the Queen of Sheba is? Well, if you guessed Bilkis, you guessed my first name. I don't know why, but my father wanted to name me after a queen. Hi, I'm Bilkis Ahmed, and I teach ABE at South Bay Adult School in Redonda Beach, California. I've been doing that for the last two years, but prior to that, since 2001, I had been teaching ESL. I just wanted to give you a little uh, taste of what that was like. So we had in, in the course, we had uh, probably half of the students actually did the video and half of them did um, a written uh, introduction. But I just thought that was so powerful and a really, I mean, I feel like I already know her now. I still can't pronounce her name correctly. I need to pr practice it, but I apologize. Bill Quis, I hope I got it right. Bill Keese. Okay. Bill Keese. Okay, Keese. Hit that. Okay, thank you so much. I'll have it now. Um, so we also used uh, our forums for video reflection. So this, the participants would watch a video. These happen to be by Susan Gare and Liz Kolb, the, um, and Liz, um, and then they would reflect. So it was just um, the first the first week we did a lot of forum, forums. So there was a lot of discussion and building of community. In week two, we go into the basics. We introduced um, a book component. And what this did was allow the students to go through um, within the course and to read everything they needed to read about the Triple E framework. And you can see if we look over here at the table of contents, we have a section for engagement. 
um, we have information um, that they read, and then we uh, presented scenarios where they could think about the different situations um, with engagement and with enhancement and extension. And if anybody has, oh, I went too far out. No, if anybody has any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat. I can multitask sometimes. Um, so once we got into, oh, I, I'm sorry. So we had the reading, then again, we had more forums. And we also had, um, oh, we also added, if anybody's familiar with SMART, smart goals, uh, we wanted our participants to think about, a, uh, create a SMART goal for themselves as they went through the pilot or went through the course to help focus on what they were trying to um, gain from going through this course. And then we had, uh, in each section, we had this fun with failure. And what we did with this is we thought that it would be really good for um, the participants to see the coaches, there were six of us that created the course and we've all been teaching and we've all had situations where things just didn't go right. The one that I wrote about was, what do you do when you've got this great lesson plan set up and ready to go and you're going to be on the computers that day and the electricity goes out. So just being ready for plan B plan C and maybe even plan D. You just never know. So with the fun with failure, each week we had um, different coaches write some of their failures um, that they had learned from, their lesson failures. And then the students would read those. And then we got a lot of feedback from our uh, participants on things that they um, were willing to share with us, things that had happened to them. So that, that gave us a really rich conversation and discussion going with, what do you do in those situations and just building that community? So now we get into the Tripoli framework part. So we had three weeks of this. We had a, um, a week of engagement, a week of enhancement, and a week focusing on extension. And each of these weeks were set up consistently so that the students learned very quickly or the participants learned quickly how to go about it. We started off with a Padlet activity. How do you enhance your lessons? So each participant would go in and they would start thinking about it and then they would share that. And what I really liked about this, um, you also got feedback from other students. They would read each other's and then they would comment on um, what, you know, they would make comments on, um, on that particular post. Another book reading, and then we go into a forum. Let's talk about enhancement. And then we get into the lesson. So what we did as coaches, we decided that, uh, okay, we decided that what we would do is to help our participants um, learn how to actually add engagements. We would present a lesson that didn't have any engagement in it or any, in, any of the E's in it. And then we would take them through systematically. So in here, you can see we had the five different program areas. If we look at ABE, we have math, reading, and writing were all representative, represented. And we gave them the original lesson plan that only had, uh, it was just a, a lesson plan without any engagement or enhancement or extension added and it was set up in the WIPIA format. <clears throat> As they go through the lesson, um, we then gave them um, the opportunity to, uh, using the rubric, we had a rubric, uh, how would they rate this lesson? So we're having them think about the lesson they just read through and how would they uh, add enhancement to that? <clears throat> I'm just gonna go through this real quickly. Then we had them um, think about more ways to incorporate in and we give them the cheat sheet and I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you the cheat sheet right now and then we'll have an opportunity to down, download it later if anybody's interested. So the cheat sheet was developed by um, put together by Debbie Jensen but developed by everyone in the course and <clears throat> well it was yeah Debbie did 99% of the work let's give Debbie the kudos okay. Um, so what we did is we go through and we have all of these 
different things that you heard the um, presenters actually talk about some of the different educational practices. And then we, Debbie organized it to engagement, enhancing, enhancement and extension. And so you've got this wonderful sheet that you can go through and then each of the links takes you out to other places to give you more information um, on those. So if is anybody's interested in this, you'll have an opportunity to download it towards the end. So, and I'll give you just one more. So now we're at the lesson. So we've shown them the original lesson plan. So now what we're gonna do is show them a lesson plan where uh, enhancement has already been added. Not only since we're enhancement, they also had the benefit of seeing where the engagement was and they have an enhancement activities put into the lesson as well. So the, the theory is that we want then it wanted them to take an original lesson plan that they have, add engagement activities, enhancement activities, and extension activities so that they would have a very robust um, lesson at the end, incorporating all of the Tripoli. E. So that's what the lesson plans look like. And how am I doing on time, guys? 9.04. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me. So the other thing, so as a part of their assignment, they would then up, they would add their components and then they would upload them into the course for grading. And then we also use Padlet again to have each of the participants upload their lesson plans in this way all of the participants could see everyone's lesson plans. So we're getting a nice repository of lessons and everybody can see the different uh, activities that everyone used. And let's see, so Padlet lesson plans. Okay, then we get down to, so we've done enhancement, engagement and extension. Another fun with failure, we had a couple of games, H5P games that were added to the course. And the final project was for each of the participants to pay, take a new original plan and add all of the E components, uh, engagement, enhancement, and extension. And we have a lot of resources in the course. Um, we actually offered an effective lesson planning um, reading for the students and the cheat sheet. And so there you have it. Do we have any questions on the course? Anything that I may have forgotten to touch upon? And I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Okay. Um, so I think, let me go over here. I think that I am finished with sharing the course. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and let the slideshow pres uh, resume. We're gonna give you an, uh, we will down, we will give you the, um, the link to the cheat sheet uh, a little bit later. Mary. It's my opportunity to share with you what happened with our first cohort. As one of the team captains, it was a great opportunity for me. Um, my team was spectacular, and I heard the same praise from every other coach. We were so excited by our participants and the work that they put in. They were the first, and so they found so many great ideas that they thought would make things better. And our wonderful Blair was busy every week changing things to make things better. And so we were very grateful to them for the efforts that they made. Um, so we posed some questions to them to ask them um, what they learned and what they wanted to share with you. And so first we want to um, have them address you and let you know what they learned. So the first question we asked them was what was the biggest takeaway? And so I will let Cindy talk about what she learned. And Cindy, go ahead, tell everybody who you are so that they kind of can relate to maybe the program you're in and stuff. Yeah, I'm, uh, hi everybody, I'm Cindy Wislowski, and um, a longtime ESL faculty member in San Diego with the adult ed division of the Community College District. 
And uh, although I'm retired now, I was very, very interested in uh, learning more about the Tripoli. I'd heard about it, you know, over the years, but um, had never utilized it. So uh, when I had the opportunity to jump on board, I really wanted to take the course to find out more about it. And um, so I would say my biggest takeaway was to be more mindful about your reasons for using technology so that it's purposeful, it's productive, it's collaborative, and it really puts learning for the real world, I would say at the forefront. And I know you'll be happy to hear that I did not use any of the E's in my description <laughs> because it's so easy just to talk about engagement, enhancement, and extension. But, um, and one of the best things for me is all the questions for the three E's that uh, you all have already presented, but I, you know, blew them up and I put them on a sheet of paper and a plastic uh, sheet protector. And I think that's so helpful. It provides you with a terrific tool as you are developing lessons. And um, a big shout out to Debbie as our super facilitator. And I know you'll be proud of me that I have this as a handy resource. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. Um, Jerry, I think you had a comment you wanted to make about the biggest takeaway. Yeah, hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Jerry Yamashita. I'm a instructional technologist at Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools in Sacramento. Um, and I think this is really great. This, this, I think my biggest takeaway was that um, we finally really have a, a, a framework that actually, I think the most, one of the most important parts comes before any of the ease and, and that's really designing something that is meaningful and that's authentic and works so that it can be enhanced by this framework. And that's really important. I think that oftentimes we jump right into the technology because it's fun and shiny and new. And, and we forget that there's actually a lesson plan and an approach that's really, really, really important. Um, and so I think that was my biggest takeaway that this was really practitioner friendly and not so much theory and not so much, uh, you know, super academic, but this was really something that people could wrap their, you know, wrap their heads around and, and get and use the next day. So I think that's uh, a, a pretty cool thing. So thank you. Thank you, Jerry. One of our participants wanted to include her thoughts, but she's at a uh, uh, retreat that she could not get out of. We tried to twist her arm, but she couldn't. So um, this was from Christina Lett. My biggest takeaway was that Liz Kolb identified specific concrete goals that teachers should identify and implement in their lessons for real conceptual learning at a time when a push for technology has grown and used disproportionately to the amount of real and actual conceptual learning that is taking place. What I would like to say about the Triple E course is that it highlights a growing need to understand and use technology in a way to truly aid conceptual learning not just to use technology for technology's sake, especially since the COVID shutdowns. The use of technology may have forced teachers away from truly thinking about how to really implement conceptual learning. It focuses on what students do with technology. It helps in the planning of engaging activities, having the students communicate and create using technology with specific concrete features to point to, engagement, enhancement, and extension activities in a way to use the framework. I love the cheat sheet. My biggest takeaway was that Liz Kolb identified specific concrete goals that teachers should identify and implement in their lessons. Oh, you know what? I think this is a repeat. <laughs> I'm sorry. So she enjoyed it and um, it was fun working with her. And so we're grateful for her efforts too. All right, let's go to the next question. Next. Can you say more about what you were doing with your lesson plans pre? Um, triple E, and what changed when you began using triple E? Now, Bill Keys, would you share with us what you learned? Good morning, everybody. Happy to be here. And a shout out to Susan Coulter, who was our fantastic coach. 
I used Padlet a lot before the Triple E course, but when I would engage the students, hook them at the beginning, I usually used Think Pair Share. Now I discovered Edpuzzle. I don't know how many of you know that, but it shows videos and you can stop, it stops it and ask questions and the students have to think about it and respond. You can have it, they can do it remotely, they can do it in person with a handout. And that seems to really engage them. I teach a lot of writing and as people know, writing is a, it's definitely a solitary act, but I found co-use to be so important. So now I pair up the students and have them write paragraphs together. And as they do so, they are more contemplative. They discuss what needs to be done and they take their time. They probe it much more deeply. Another thing that I had them do was to create graphic organizers with Google Draw. Instead of me, like somebody had mentioned, instead of giving them all the resources, have them create things. So they would do that. Uh, also with Google Docs, create rubrics for the assignments, for the paragraph assignments. And my students are very busy. I'm sure all your students are so busy with life and work and school. And I always hesitated to give them assignments out of class, any kind of homework. But I found that to extend the lessons beyond the classroom, it helps them to reiterate what they've learned in class. So now I give them extension exercises where they have to just post a video on Padlet about some time that they have used the technology or they have used the concept that we've learned in class. Thank you. Back to you, Debbie. Oh, I love those ideas. I feel like I need to write them all down. <laughs> Thank you. Anna, could you tell us what you did before and then changes you've made? Hi, um, I'm Anna Walker. I uh, work at Pasadena City College. I'm instructor. I work mostly with um, developmentally disabled adults. And I think that for me, I'm going to be a little bit more general than Bill Keith <laughs> because I haven't actually begun using some of these um, in my actual classes, but I can say that before I took this class, my, my lesson plans, even though I think I was naturally using some of these types of um, enhancement and engagement, I don't think I intentionally was looking at how they work together. So um, I think that this, once I took this course, it just really made me think intentionally and plan for that, that idea of having all of this come together to create lesson plans that really make these work together. My students aren't necessarily technologically savvy. Um, so I think that one thing that is important to understand about this these whole concepts, although I know we talk about technology and we talk about, you know, using this particular app or whatever, even if your students aren't technologically savvy, you the ideas behind this, you can use all three of these. Even if you never opened up a computer, you could use all three of these. And um, that's what I really got from this. I think that enhancement wasn't really on my radar before. Um, and I'm really starting to think about how I can have my students, you know, create more of their own questions and just become more involved in that learning process for themselves. Extension, some extension is built into my classes because I teach functional living skills. So of course, we're always taking, you know, the shopping and the addition and subtraction into the community and that sort of thing. But um, I think for me, just understanding more about how these three components work together to create more of a customized plan for your students, that, that was really what changed for me, was just the thinking intentionally. Thank you. That was wonderful. I appreciate that very much. Question number three. Walk through one of the changes you made to your lessons incorporating the three E's. And we've got Song, would you like to speak to that? Debbie, I'm sorry, I don't think Song is here. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for checking. I should have checked ahead of time to make sure. Okay, Alicia, can you speak to this? 
Yes, I make sure I had put my mute off. Yes, um, I am with San Diego Community College. Um, and I am, as with Anna, I teach adults with disabilities. My class is um, daily communication skills. So one of the things, walk through the changes, again, from what Anna had said, a lot of my students, all of them is online, Zoom, um, they are challenged with the computer. Um, so that's a whole nother, it was very hard for me at times, but actually I had to look at this in another way. So the changes, it was incorporating, how am I going to use this technology to engage them? So as uh, I heard someone talk about Edpuzzle, I use that. Coming to all these workshops, webinars, I'm learning so much. So these are great tools for engagement. I had, I thought, well, we'll just go together. You don't have to read it. We'll look at it and it'll speak. So that's kind of how I've done it. The engaging, finding new things via technology, enhancing, going through it step by step with my students and telling them this is what we're doing. The extension, as Anna had said, she works um well, we have daily communication. So I had done a lesson on shopping. I'll pull out an ad. I'll use my annotate, all these great tools that I'm learning via technology so um, to engage my students. And it has just been, um, I, it's been exciting for me because even although they are limited, I have visually impaired, nonverbal, if they can do something and that means it's a go. So via technology, and once I get to go face to face, I am just like so excited that I get to share all this with them. So um, it's exciting. It's a new way of thinking for me, really thinking outside the box and engaging using more technology in my Zoom. So it's it's been quite a. I will tell you one big thing that I just learned just yesterday or Wednesday was Cindy's Jamboard, that little laser thing. I mean, it's, I, usually with the annotate, it's all over and I have to clear it. You know, with that laser, I just go boom. It's so exciting. So I tell you, these little bits and pieces that I learned from all over is exciting for me for working with students who are digitally, digitally challenged. This is awesome. So again, am I thinking outside the box? Absolutely. So I'm always thinking, incur I always have music, you know, all kinds of stuff, engaging them technology through different ways. So that's it. Thank you, Debbie, for being so supportive for us. <laughs> oh, it's been a joy. Thank you for your comments. That was really great. Now we have a question in the chat from Karen and she said, did the teachers give feedback about their students' participation throughout this process? Did they notice a difference in their classes? And we've asked Bill Quies to address question number four. Um, Bill Quies, have you tried these with your students? How have your students reacted? I, I have, I taught them a writing lesson on cause and effect paragraphs and they loved it. We started with the Ed Puzzle, then we did a pair work where they had to write the paragraph and submit it on Padlet. And they enjoyed that time to be able to discuss together rather than just as a class. And being together, it made it easier for them to ask questions, they didn't feel as shy. And then once they posted those on Padlet, I had other groups go and peer edit. So they had to write the comments in the Padlet section. But then they had to discuss with one other group to clarify any questions about those comments. The other thing that uh, they really liked was the extension. How would they apply this in their own life? And one of the students said that they had an unruly neighbor who was always making noise. And so they would use that cause and the effect and then write this a letter to the landlord. Another one talked about non-residents coming in and using the tennis courts in their community because somehow they got access to the key and then showing the effects of their leaving trash and making noise and not allowing get the residents to be able to use those tennis courts. And just last night, I was so proud. One of the students said she wrote a one and a half page email about a complaint doing using the cause and effect. 
that she had for purchasing something. And so she said, I couldn't have done it without you. So I was very proud of that. And I have to say, uh, reiterate what other people have said about the course that we've learned so much that cheat sheet has been invaluable. And uh, I learned something about choice boards. I, I feel like I was in a vacuum before. Learning about choice boards has given me a whole new approach to having students submit their work so they can do it via writing or as a, a slideshow or even a video. And I think giving students that choice empowers them. So it's been wonderful. The students have reacted wonderfully with it. They feel more engaged. They feel that they're learning a lot more. It, I think it's becoming something that's embodied in them rather than a concept and then they leave it and that's it. Thank you, back to you. Thank you, appreciate that so much. As an ABE teacher, I very much gravitate to what you've said because many of these engagement activities are built into ESL. You, you do these things, it's just normal. But ABE, not necessarily. It's more of a standard kind of classroom. And when I read that the amount of learning that takes place when you do not do co-use goes way down and I thought, well, I'm working really hard, but they're not getting it. And so I was really, really thrilled with just small changes you can make in your class to bring in that co-use in an ABE classroom, in a CTE classroom, in all high school classroom, so that the students are more successful. So I very much appreciated it. Thank you for your, for your ideas. I think, Jennifer, you had a comment you would like to make. Yes, um, recently we were doing a co-ops related to medical services. And we, uh, especially around COVID, we were using uh, the apps to, uh, with a literacy level uh, student population to make appointments to get our booster shots, et cetera, et cetera. So, and like, where, how do you find this using Google Maps to find the places to, to get the shots using county, uh, resources to make appointments, et cetera, et cetera. And then also people were sharing their um, uh, experiences going into uh, the clinics themselves and what happened during the clinic. So we were using uh, sequencing activities to talk about that. However, um, what happened recently is my, uh, a student had to go her husband was not able to take her to her medical appointment, which he always did. And because of what she had learned in the class and thinking about things in clear, concrete steps, now I need to go to registration. Now I know, need to go in the waiting room. Now um, learning how, knowing how to check in with her cell phone before she even gets to the hospital. Um, it was really important. The husband personally came in and thanked the entire class for participating in these activities because now he feels confident that his wife can go to the hospital by herself and be safe because she knows what she knows what will happen because she went through this process in the classroom itself, learning about these activities. So that's it. Thank you. That is remarkable. Yeah. And I think that is teaching at its best when we make it so that their lives are enhanced and in, extended and well, I think successful. It, most importantly, it's not just it wasn't the teacher teaching. It was more like the, the students teaching them the each other about what's yeah. happening. And yeah. so we would even do little, like little mini writing um, assignments about uh, I go to Kaiser Hospital. I go to this uh, this clinic, that clinic. So talking about these things, talking about the steps, talking about using the apps was really important. And that's that's who the the, the husband thanked. He didn't thank me. He thanked the entire class. So very good. Okay. Very good. All right. Okay. Question number five. Um, is, is what would you like to say about the Triple E course? And we're opening this up to everyone. So please, um, who would like to speak first? Because um, we'd like you all to make your comments. Bill Chris, do you would you like to start? Sure. I, okay. I think it's already been said, uh, everything that we've learned has been so valuable. That Triple E cheat sheet 
was eye-opening. I <laughs> didn't realize how many ways to engage, enhance, and extend, but it gave ideas that led to other ideas. So I would just have to say, the biggest thing was that it opened my mind to so many more possibilities and not just carrying on my lesson plans in a rote way. So thank you all for that. Thank you. I appreciate the fact that you guys were all fabulous teachers to start with. You weren't beginners. You were fabulous first. And this all made you better. And I think that's really exciting. Um, we have a question from Karen. Yes, yeah, so actually I wasn't in your triple E framework, but three of my teachers um, did go through the course. And I would like to comment from an outside looking in, I was very interested in the course when I reached out to Susan, I said, look, I said, this is really important to me, all these bells and whistles, we've been in COVID, we've been teaching online, but the teachers feel like they have to use every new tech tool that they're introduced to, and it's taking away from student engagement because of all the time that was being invested in how do you do this new tool? How do you do that new tool? So I am so grateful to hear that it was, it was rolled out as it was intended. If it does not enhance the lesson, do not use technology. And I, and I know, I mean, I love technology, don't get me wrong, but if that is the biggest takeaway, keep it simple, keep the students engaged, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> so please, I, I kudos to everyone. Um, I, I, I obviously I want to take it myself, but it was so important that my instructors took this course because every time I'd walk into their classes, I'm like, are you sure your students know how to do that? I mean, I'm lost. And I just could not understand. Can we pull it back a little bit? Um, so thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Karen. We appreciate that. All right. Who's next? Who wants to speak? Um, I can speak if you'd like. Thank you. Thank um, you. Anna. I think that um, for me, well, first of all, I really want to thank, well, I want to thank Susan because she was my coach. And, um, but I, I'm sure that other students had the same experience with their coaches. Susan was so warm and she just really helped me. I was a little stuck. I have to say, as I was going through the course, I was confused about the difference between engagement and enhancement. And so Susan kind of just took me aside, sat me down and, and really laid it out for me so I could understand it a little bit better. And I really enjoyed the fact that we had the forums and the discussion groups, we were able to see what other teachers were doing. We were able to give some feedback. Um, Elisa, who, who also, I'm, I'm usually the only person who works with developmentally disabled adults. And so to find somebody else who worked with them and she was putting down in her discussion some of the most incredible things that she was doing. And so I was, I'm gonna steal that, I'm stealing that. Um, and so just to, to be able to have those discussions with, with instructors that you would never meet in real life was really incredible. And um, somebody asked in, in the chat about uh, in, uh, feedback from our coaches and we did get wonderful feedback every step of the way they were there. Um, we had weekly meetings with them. I don't know that that was mentioned, but we did meet with our, um, our little cohort and our coach uh, to talk about anything that we had trouble with. And also she would go through you know, the next week's ideas and, and what we were going to be doing in case we had any questions. So I, I really just felt very supported in the class. And again, I think that it is important to say that you don't necessarily have to be technology savvy to use these ideas. They just sort of transcend all of that. So that was my experience. I, I really, I really loved it. And I, I think people that take it will really get a lot out of it. Thank you. I appreciated it too, because that was one of the awarenesses that I came to. I mean, this is a technology symposium. We're teaching technology and that's, that's where we're at. 
this is the time and place in history where we're using technology. But the idea is you use it to enhance your class. You use it to make it so that the students learn. And otherwise, you don't need it. They can go home and they can play games. Um, here, it's to use it and to prepare them to use it. There's so much technology they're going to need in their lives and to need to use it well. Mm -hmm. And so when they go to their jobs or they go on to college or they go forward, that they can use the technology appropriately. So that was very exciting to me too. Who's next? I'll go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, um, again, um, it was always um, seeing Anna as another one who worked with a challenged individuals. It was great to see her um, responses. So that was really good. I think the thing for me, again, was as Anna had said, even although we may have digital, digitally challenged individual students, we they're still coming around. They're doing it. Um, I wasn't able to say this, but because of this, I have a lot of um, stutters in my class. They were openly volunteering feeling comfortable versus being in a classroom it was real they were very hesitant so this opened the bar so could i see that can i chart it i can you know um so i saw some really great things they were asking other students questions in the gallery so you know there there it is right there for you guys i mean <laughs> they're putting their heads up these guys always put their head down because they they're not feeling confident about themselves, but when they're on Zoom with me, they're up. So is that engagement? Absolutely. Is that enhancement? I think so. And who? there was someone who said, you don't have to have all three of them. Absolutely, that's true. But I'm also taking extension as they can extend this positivity going outside in the real world, wherever they go. That's how I take it. Maybe I take tiny steps at a time, but it's great. Um, so I think... I think everyone should take this, not only all teachers. I think it'd be great for everyone just for interpersonal skills, correct? I mean, we all need this. How do you approach someone, you know, oh, that person's quiet. They're not talking to me. They have this. You just need to find that way you can get them. Is it because I have a special head on? Special, you know, I come from that maybe, but I just think everyone, this would enlighten everybody. That's my feel on it. <laughs> anyway. I, I think it was a great course. Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate all your hard work and all that you contributed to the class. Oh. Who else? Who would like to speak next? I'm ready. I'm ready. Cindy, Cindy thank you. Oh, sh sure. So I would say the Tripoli course successfully, successfully guides all the participants to understand the pedagogy of including, you know, the three E's, engagement, enhancement, and extension activities. Uh, it was also confirming, you know, to some degree that some of the face-to-face -face activities that I did use with my low-level ESL students prior to my retirement did fit into the framework, like having two students work together on one computer. That's kind of a, an example of co-use, I would say. And like one works the mouse, the other works the keyboard with two headsets connected onto one computer. But of course, there was a lot more to learn. Uh, for me, the area of extension, I think was the most challenging, how to create more opportunities for those literacy level students to learn um, outside of the classroom and to bridge to their everyday life. Uh, also, there were, you know, tons of ideas of how to use the technology um, in order to build more comprehensive and effective lessons. Um, and more kudos to the cheat sheet resource that, you know, a lot of people have mentioned already. Um, I did, I learned some new things like choice boards. Bill Keys mentioned that as well. I had never heard of that before. Um, you know, which gives learners options for demonstrating their proficiency. And I did write down one of the quotes that I wanted to remember, and that is uh, differentiation 
is making sure that the right students get the right learning tasks at the right time. And I really like that. And I think it really is succinct with what we're trying to do. Um, there is also in the course, a lot of helpful experiential sharing among the participants. I especially related to the fun with failure section um, and it revealed a variety of frustrations and surprising teaching experiences using technologies that we've all had. And it was interesting to hear about everyone's unique teaching situation. We're all in a different situation. We're teaching different uh, topics in different uh, environments. And um, so that was interesting. And the course fac facilitators, of course, were so very supportive. They consistently provided feedback that was helpful and guidance throughout the, the course as you, you know, dive in deeper and deeper. So you never felt alone. You had the other participants, you had the facilitators. And also the um, included in the course were weekly Zoom meetings. So those were much appreciated also to review not only the previous week's content, but a preview of what's coming up in the current week and to discuss any concerns anybody might have. So I did appreciate that tremendously. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate that. We appreciate each of the team leaders, um, uh, Susan Coulter, myself and Elisa uh, Takeuchi were the team leaders. Now, Elisa's not been mentioned because her participants couldn't be here today, but I wanted you to know that they have written glowing reports about her too. Now, is there anyone else? I think we've got a couple more people. Do you have any more comments that you'd like to make? Debbie? Uh -huh. Eva was not able to be here, but she did write something. So um, okay. if you don't mind, um, Eva Lichwa, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is an ESL non-credit um, college um, instructor at Glendale College. Um, she wrote this, the Triple E course was well-paced and very engaging. I found the number of six weeks to be perfect for me, not too short, not too long. I really enjoyed um, that fact that there were not too many participants in this course, allowing us to get to know each other and learn more from one another. I learned a lot about the differences among engagement, enhancement, and extension. The scenarios in the ebook were very helpful and clarified my knowledge on how to implement them. Now I feel more aware of Triple E and I feel confident enough to incorporate the Triple E into my lesson planning uh, involving technology. The cheat sheet was extremely interesting to explore and helped us to incorporate the right activities. And I will save it for future lesson planning reference. The weekly sessions gave us an idea of what is expected of us next week allowing time for clarifying and answering the questions we had during the live sessions. The facilitator was really encouraging and always made sure we were on the right track and not falling behind. I'm glad to have been part of this short Triple E cohort. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, Jerry, do you have something you want to add? Um, yeah, hi. I, I'll I'll add um, that I think, um, first of all, thanks Debbie uh, for all your flexibility with me. And, and you know, uh, I know we're all busy and trying to get things done, but this was a really great uh, experience. And, and um, I think one of the things um, that I would like to say about the course itself is that I think it was really well designed it's from an instructional design standpoint, having uh, I think the layout of, of everything, if we're just talking about functionality, the layout was really well done. Having an asynchronous and synchronous um, format um, is, I think, ideal. It's one of my favorite uh, sort of designs. I think it's really important to have, you know, even if it's a short meeting that you have a synchronous session with your facilitator or your instructor, I think it's really powerful. And I think that helped, helped us and, and the other cohorts as well. Um, 
I know that most folks, or maybe I'm assuming, but I think most folks were teachers on this. And, and so as a former teacher, and I, you know, I still find myself in the classroom every once in a while, um, but through a kind of an administrator lens um, in ed tech, I think that it's really, this was really nice <clears throat> as far as um, addressing key fundamentals in achieving uh, positive technology integration outcomes. I'm, I'm really, uh, fo you know, uh, focused on technology integration strategies a, a lot. And I think this was a great way to get into it and introduce a lot of folks to it um, that would help administrators actually make their jobs a little bit easier too, because the, the folks that are doing the work are actually starting to get familiar with, with what we're trying to do from kind of the, the, the 10,000 foot view. Um, and, you know, again, I just want to reemphasize that I really appreciated that the objectives came first before the technology. I think that's super important. Um, and so reinforcing that in a course um, or even introducing that in a course to many folks is is huge. And so um, I say kudos to the team and, and thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jerry. We appreciate that. We appreciate all of our participants. This was a wonderful experience and we want to repeat it. Let me turn to the next slide now and turn it over to Blair and she'll tell you about it. Okay, well, that was just fabulous. I loved hearing it. Not, um, I wasn't a coach this session, so I didn't get to be um, boots on the ground with it. So it's wonderful to hear from all of the participants and all the kudos that were given to the coaches and the course alike. So thank you very much. Which brings us to this slide. We want you. So if any of you are at all interested in participating in this course, the plan is that we will have, this was a pilot run. Um, we'll do another session more than likely in the fall. And we would really love for you to join us to make your lessons better, you'll learn to add, add activities which will engage the learner, enhance the use of technology, and lay a foundation for the students to extend the learning beyond the classroom through this six weeks course. And we look forward to hearing from all of you. Um, and Susan Coulter, I'll turn it over to you for the last point. Okay. Oops, there we go. Um, Want to talk a little bit about TWT. Um, which stands for Teaching with Technology. It is an online database uh, on the OTAN website um, and has numerous activities. But because of Tripoli, we are now changing it, um, upgrading it, um, and we are um, putting in uh, our lesson plans. We're using the WIPIA format and we are adding um, enhancement engagement um, and uh, extension to the lesson plans. And when you pull up a lesson, one of the new lesson plans, you can see that. It's not, has not moved over to the new site yet, but this is the, we want to um, take some of the lesson plans from the course because we've got some great lesson plans with, with all the components in it. And we want to add those um, so everyone could use them. So you will be seeing um, these lesson plans that participants have created um, in the Teaching with Technology database. Okay, back to you. I guess it's Debbie. Jennifer. Hi. Emily. <laughs> Sorry. So I was wondering if we have any further questions. Uh, I know people have been asking about the cheat sheet uh, the link has just been dropped into the chat and the, uh, also the white paper. So with the white paper, you're going to see the, re the, the original research on the triple E framework mm -hmm. and how it was development and uh, the, some of the objectives and the outcomes. With the cheat sheet itself, you're going to get that list that everybody has been talking about with, uh, with the um, activities and the associated enhancement, engagement and extension act, uh, uh, activities that it's associated with. So again, take just a second to, to uh, grab those white, the white paper and also the, the cheat sheet. I also see another um, 
Uh, Jamie, I see you just dropped something in. Oh, is this the original EdTech uh, article, Jamie? No, wanna... you just, it, it just wasn't a link when it came oh. in. So I... Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So does anybody have any further questions or sharing before we leave? I'd like to say a few words, if that's Thank okay. You. Um, yeah, I just want to say that this has been a beautiful, I've been, I was not a coach either, but I helped develop the course. And I think to see that this course could be run in a small group fashion with a, a learning circle and coaches, I think for me, it seems like the future of learning is small groups and learning culture. So um, I'm really pleased to see that the course, we had no idea if it was going to work, but it went beautifully. So thank you, all the coaches and participants. Yeah, I'd like to piggyback on that as well. Um, I think that the course really helped us as the, the course creators and the coaches to really understand how learning is done well and having these small groups and um, really be mindful of the course in that we incorporated the ease within our course. So our participants were projecting themselves as students. And so they were learning how their students would be learning in a lesson plan. And I think that was a, a really good idea on our part to really show to the participants how much that this is really important to to all learning and so and then um also the fact that there was so much more that they added for us they added so much value our participants were so good about giving us feedback throughout the whole, all the stages of of this course and that we're going to take that feedback and now really in, um implement our piloted course to make it something really great even beyond just um, what was the content? We learned so much more about how our teachers needed more support with just lesson planning in general. And so that those are really, really um, nice discussions that my group had every week in that there was always something to discover and more. And so for us as coaches to really help support our participants, um, really, it, it showed in, in their work. The lesson plans that they um put into the course for the repository were incredible. I'm so proud of all of my, you know, my participants and just reading the forms from the other participants of the other groups was really beneficial for me as a coach. Definitely true. And I want to add that the triple E white paper is just a white paper. However, in the very near future, it will be a vetted journal article with what much more research embedded into it. Um, and so look for that coming up. And I'd also like to add, if it's okay, um, so right now the course is in Moodle. We will be transitioning it over to Canvas. And one of the things that we talked about it as coaches, and I'm not sure that it's been mentioned here today, is that um, this would be something that if you wanted a copy of this course in the future and use with just your agency, your colleagues, that is something that would be possible to do. In addition to OTAN will be also running the, uh, the course once or twice a year. Um, and you can be with other you know, people around the country or around the state. So two different ways to run it. You could run it, your, have a copy of the course, run it yourself or join OTAN's um, course and have coaches from OTAN run it so yeah we do recommend that if you're going to run the course that you take it first but it's not necessary yeah <laughs> and you could have one of you know if you run it for your your agency and just want your agency you could have one of OTAN coaches be the coach in the course but just have a cohort of your co-workers different experience you know whatever works best for you so please keep that in mind <laughs>